Hey guys, it's Jeff from Coding Blocks here again, uh, working on Code Wars uh, yet again. And this time I wanted to share with you a special problem. Um, this was actually the first problem that I've written for Coding for um, coding Wars, Code Wars. And um, the deal was that I noticed that there weren't a lot of tree problems, even though I know that tree problems come up a lot of times in interviews. You know, they don't um, come up a whole lot at work. Uh, if you do in line of business type applications, they are really important and really efficient data structures. And we should probably do an episode on uh, the podcast one of these days. But uh, anyway, my goal was to make a tree problem that was as simple as I could think of. I wanted the best introduction to a tree, uh, or rather the easiest introduction to a tree that I could think of. And I've gotten good feedback on it so far. Uh, I had one minor quibble uh, with some of the tests I wrote that I've addressed, and I'll show you guys that after we solve it. I've got 15 completions. Anyway, uh, Code Wars just rocks, and uh, I'm kind of sad that I waited this long to uh, try writing a problem. And uh, let's go do it. All right, so um, the first thing I, I realized when I started doing this was that um, doing tree problems is kind of hard on Code Wars because you have to um, tell them about the structure of the data you're going to be passing in that you expect to deal with, which is kind of gross just because um, there isn't a real good mechanism for doing that uh, usability-wise. And second, just explaining trees and text is kind of rough. But what I did was uh, look at some tree problems that I liked and just kind of uh, stole their syntax, stole the way they wrote the problem. And I figured if they were popular and people were able to solve them, then, um, you know, maybe mine would be too. Not that I care about being popular, but, um, you know, I, just, I wanted to write a good problem. And uh, let me show you how I did that first, actually. So if you go over to Kata, it's got a great uh, search feature here. You can actually drag to select multiple difficulties. And let's say we search for tree. I didn't find a good way of searching for trees flat out or for tags flat out, but I found that if you found find one problem, that you can click on it from there. So interesting. If we look in levels eight, seven, and six, it dropped my tag. Hang on here. I was gonna say that's that's a lot. So let's, let's only look at the, the trees tag. There are only three approved katas in level six, seven, eight, and they all happen to be in level six. If we move over to beta, then we've got uh, a total of four, including mine. And so, um, you know, there's, there's I think, 1,600 problems on uh, codewars.com and only, you know, that few trees, if we expand it out to all difficulties, or I guess just remove the difficulty filter and change it to approved and beta, why not? Is that 15? Okay, 24. 24 tree problems on all of Code Wars. That's just crazy. So um, yeah, so I wanted to write a tree problem. So let's take a look at mine. Uh, I set it as a seven, it's still in beta, which means um, it's kind of undergoing review. There's some um, brave souls that uh, do beta problems, like if you set your filter. Um, like right here, you can do beta problems too, and you actually get a little bit more honor for them, which is kind of nice. And um, they ask you for feedback in the end, so you can say, you know, great, bad, kind of meh, and leave feedback. And um, so that's a really nice feature, and I'm doing pretty good here, so hopefully I'm going to be approved. It's very exciting for me. So with, without uh, further ado, it's in JavaScript, the language of the web. So um, given a node object representing a binary tree, binary tree just meaning it's got two children. I know there are fancy binary trees and there's all sorts of fancy trees in general, but um, this is just a real simple binary tree. Write a function that returns the sum of all values, including the root. So in this example here, we've got uh, 10 at the root one is the left child, two is the right. If you add them all together, you should get 13. And it doesn't matter if you go 10 plus one plus two or one plus 10 plus two, it doesn't matter. Um, is that addition is cumulative, commutative? One of those, I don't remember. Um, also, our trees don't have to be balanced. You know, We can have null children, uh, or leaf nodes, and things should still add up appropriately. And I don't show the examples, but um, you should also handle negative numbers. Um, and when I say examples, let me show you. 
hit train again. I've solved this quite a few times now. When I say examples, I mean the example test cases. So um, I wrote out tests for the examples I showed here on the left. And that was actually really annoying. And that's probably why a lot of people don't do trees. So not only do you have to kind of define the structure and you don't even define it in code because this is language agnostic, right? You can choose other languages if it supports it. Um, but you have to test these guys and look at this. That's totally unreadable. That sucks. So anyway, um, yeah, I had to write that out. So uh, let's start with solving the problem. Okay, that was a very important. Got to get the space in between the brackets there. Got a little note up here. Return sum of all values in the tree, including the root. So let's start with that case. So um, return my root dot value. I know it's dot value because of the explanation over here. No intelligence or anything. But it's not enough to just return the root value, I'm just returning the 10 here. So I also want to return the sum of uh, my left children's values and my right children's values. And I'm not great at explaining trees. You know, um, I just kind of got a, a feel for them. Um, they're very recursive structures. And so it can be really confusing to um, look at them sometimes. But um, I don't know, they always just kind of made sense to me. Um, one of the few things that have made sense to me in computing. So I want to add my value to the sum of my left and the sum of my right. Okay, so let's take this uh, example here of the 10, 1, 2. So I say, Take in my root, which is the 10, it's got two children. Return the root value 10 plus the sum of left. So let's go ahead and bounce into that function. Now we're imagining this is uh, the left node here. And it says return the root dot value, which is one, plus my left and my right. And I don't have a, you know, this one here doesn't have a left and a right. So let's go ahead and take care of that clause. And uh, a simple way of doing that is basically just saying, um, you know, I could if this stuff and check the children, but I think it's just easier to handle it here. Say, if the root is null, so in the case where I tried to pass in the left children of one, and just return zero, right? We're adding here, so, um, you know, zero doesn't hurt anything. So that should bubble up. So let's try running through this one more time. I kind of skipped out half to, halfway through there. So we pass in this guy, this structure, and we say, if the root, which has value of 10, is null, nope. Okay, so let's return that value 10 plus the sum of tree values left. Let's follow that down. We pass in the root it's left, which has one. And so one comes in here. Is root null? No. Okay. Return one plus sum the tree values of your left children. There are none. So return zero plus the sum of your right children. There are none. So it's zero. So we just return one here. So now we bought back into our original function. And if you uh, remember, we had the 10 here from the root. So it's 10 plus. This is now evaluated to one. We do the same thing for the right side. We go down here. The node is not null. So we return its value, two, plus its left children, zero, right children, zero. So it's two. So now the whole expression here is 10 plus one plus two. So we should get 13. Let's go ahead and run those tests. All right, cool. And it uh, actually handled our second example here of an unbalanced tree. Let me think about it. Root value is one, so return the root value plus my left child is zero, no children, so one plus zero plus uh, some three values. Um, this one is zero. Left children, there isn't any, so that's a zero. Right children's a two, so I should get one plus two uh, and equal three. And 
and uh, that looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with how the solution's written. Let's go ahead and submit it and I'll show you guys a little bit more about it. All right, so the first thing you might notice here is that we only had two example test cases, but we actually ran 105. And you can see where I kind of um, wrote some additional tests here to make sure negative numbers work, deep nodes work, stuff like that. But uh, the only piece of feedback I got over here uh, from a moderator was telling me I needed some random um, tests. And so I, uh, this was a kind of annoying, um, not knowing that I had to do it, I think it's a good idea, but it, it was annoying to write. I'll show you, show you guys the code for that. Um, I wanted to create trees with random numbers of nodes with random um, values in them and make sure that the numbers that I added up in an independent way matched up with the uh, answers that were submitted by um, the users. So let's go ahead and submit final and we'll take a look at how I did that. All right. So if we go back to my profile and go to authored and go to edit. It always asks me that. I don't know why. You can see where I wrote the description in GitHub Markdown. And it's got some nice uh, help information on that. Um, links, examples, stuff like that. This whole experience has been really great. Um, here's the solution that I uh, actually coded because you do have to solve your problem when you submit it, which I guess is nice. It kind of proves that your solution is solvable. It would suck if you wrote a bunch of tests and then made a mistake in the test and didn't know it and nobody was able to solve the problem. So um, it is nice to have a solution there and it lets moderators and other people see um, that uh, it's a it's legit. Initial solution is what the, the user starts out with. Preload is kind of cool. Um, does everything as hovers. Anyway, uh, preloaded basically lets you specify a case that will automatically be run when the user first enters. And again, we've got help. Over here on the test cases, example test cases is what the user sees. Very nice. And test cases is the additional stuff. So I have this, this first two from the examples. If you go down, um, I have some additional ones which are really annoying because it gets just really long and just ugly. And that's why most people probably don't write tree problems. But here are my random tests. So I got the feedback saying I needed some random tests. And I did a little bit of research on it. And actually, if you Google around code wars and random tests, it'll um, tell you why it has to do with botting. And I guess um, it does make sense that if you really wanted to solve a problem, then you could just keep checking for the inputs to your function and returning the output that you see is required to pass the test. And that's really easy to buy and it's just a cheap way of doing things. And so they want to have random tests that are different every time and so that people can't just, you know, kind of say, if input equals ABC, return one, two, three. If input equals two, three, four, return X, Y, Z, you know. Um, so I thought that was really cool, um, cool reason for doing it. But um, what is nice about me developing the solution is if I want to write more tree problems and I've got a decent way, um, but not great way of generating um, binary trees for use in testing. So I can kind of take this code and tweak it and um, it's not great and it doesn't do a good job of creating balanced trees and, and there's other problems with it, but um, it does a decent enough job in my opinion. So that's pretty cool. And you can run your test cases against your solution, make sure everything still works. Yay. Cool. 105 passed. And uh, 100 of those, 105 were random. So I'm um, looking pretty good. All right, cool. So other people can um, fork your problems. There's, there's a couple other things. Um, did want to show you guys too about uh, different languages because as you know, uh, Code Wars supports multiple languages. So you can actually translate problems. But the way you do it is uh, a little bit different than I expected. So it treats it as a, a Kumite, um, which is kind of a, I don't even know how to explain it. I read up a little bit about it on the site, but um, it's a way of interacting with people, um, almost like a fight. Like you kind of go back and forth coding with a person. Um, so it's kind of competitive. So I guess in the spirit of martial arts, it's kind of like sparring with somebody as opposed to a kata, which is more like practicing the punch kind of thing, right? 
So anyway, um, I did a translation of this problem that I authored and it's not showing up yet because it hasn't been approved and there's a, a pretty lengthy approval process which might be baked into the, the Kumite. If we go over to Kumite, we can see um, where I did this and actually um, I need to add the, the random test over here. I hadn't had that feedback yet and so I think next time I write a problem, I'll probably wait for it to get approved before I translate because uh, I can't figure out how to edit this. Um, so yeah. I don't know what to do about that except for uh, just kind of wait and see what happens and see if I get approved um, or if somebody else maybe, um, you know, fights me a little bit on it or something. But um, that's about it. That was my first problem and uh, we'll have a link to it in the description and uh, feel free to try it out and um, beat me up on it. All right. Thanks, guys.